Welcome back and I've got another fun video for you today. What we're going to be looking at is pulley systems. You'll notice that Pippin the Pony's not with us today. She's off on another one of her travelling missions. But we've got a new member of the team, Laika the dog. Many years ago I used to train naval cadets and one of the things we had to do was build pulley systems. And I thought I knew all about it. And it was a classic case of you think you know all about something until you try and explain it to someone. And it was only when I started explaining how pulley systems worked that I realised I hadn't really got a good idea in my head of what was going on. So today I'm going to show you what they are, show you how they work and try and explain how they do what they do. So a pulley system or a block and tackle consists of a few things. Firstly, it consists of uh, the area where you have the load that you want to lift. And the other end here, uh, Bob's got the effort where he's going to pull. Um, pulleys in various numbers. I've got two pulleys here. And then a piece of rope strung between them. And this whole thing makes up the pulley system. And we're going to see how the pulley system affects the load and effort needed to lift the load. So, time for a bit of counterintuitive physics. You'll notice that at Bob's end here, I've got two weights, so I've got uh, two newtons on here. And the load end, I've got the uh, little car, and I've also got two weights on there. I've got two newtons. Now, if you think about it, this end is actually rather more than two newtons because it's got the weights, it's got this bottom pulley and the car. But the strange thing is that if I let go, Bob's end always wins. So I'll lift that up again. And remembering that this end is heavier, but... It's still the two weights that somehow win over the two weights, the pulley and the weight of the car. And that's going to need some explaining. So years ago, I knew all of this, but I found it very difficult to explain to pupils exactly what was going on until I realised there was something obvious. So the physics behind this is relatively easy. You use a pulley system to make the effort, that's us pulling, much easier. They magnify up the force. So we only need to put in a small force here, two newtons, and we can overcome maybe three or even four newtons on the load side. But how does the pulley system do that? And one of the mistakes that people make is they say, oh, well, it makes it easier. So we use less energy to lift the load. And that can't be true. So what is going on? Well, it's pretty clear that the energy needed to lift this side must have come from the effort, must have come from the person pulling on the rope, or in this case, the weights I've put on this end. And a much smaller effort can lift a much bigger load. But if all the energy comes from this side, what's going on? And what you need to know is that the energy transfer here is force times distance. And what we've got here is a small force, and here we've got a larger force. But if I was to put rulers on this, you'll notice that to lift this a small way, I have to move the effort a very large way. So, small force, large distance has the same effect as small distance lifting, very large force lifting. So the pulley system has the way of magnifying up the force but of course, to compensate, you're going to have to pull in more rope. So now we've established we use the physics of force times distance to work out how this works. What's with all these extra ropes? And that was the bit I found difficult to explain. So here goes. It's actually really easy. If you look at this, this is a two string pulley system. And the confusion was I originally saw three strings. But the bit that's doing the lifting, this bottom pulley, has two strings attached to it. So forget the one you're pulling on. So it's a two string pulley system. And here's the clever twist. That at this end, if Bob pulls in 10 centimetres of rope, okay, 
he must have shortened this lot by 10 centimetres. 10 centimetres must have been pulled in. Well, if there's two of them, I've pulled the pulley up by five centimetres. And if it's moved up by five centimetres, then I've taken five off this side and five off that side. So that's my 10 centimetres. So the pulley only goes up five centimetres, half the distance, but twice the force. So if that explanation wasn't my best work, here's another way of looking at it. Imagine this on a big scale. If we lift the car by 10 metres, then this pulley also has moved up by 10 metres. This rope has got shorter by 10 metres. This rope must have also got shorter by 10 metres for the whole lot to go up. So we must have pulled in 20 metres of rope, and that's twice as much. Twice the distance, therefore, to transfer the energy, half the force is needed. Now, it's worth saying you can make it even easier to lift heavy loads. You have more pulley systems or more ropes going round and round the pulleys, and you can produce multiple ones, maybe two uh, pulleys on this one and two pulleys here, so you have four ropes and things like that. But there is a limit, of course, because you're not only lifting um, the load, but you're lifting the pulley and all the rope, and you're overcoming friction. So you can't do this millions and millions of times. Obviously, if you did and you got it to work, you'd have to pull in so much rope, you'd disappear miles away. And that wouldn't really be a very good system. Now, I'm not sure if you've come across pulleys in the uh, real world, in applications that you've seen about, but the one that I always remember from my Navy days is the cadet sailing. And the rope that they pulled in to bring in the uh, mainsail, the, the big sail on their um, sailing boats, um, they could never have attached a rope just to the boom and just pulled it in. They would no way be strong enough. They'd be hauled out of the boat. So instead, there's a pulley system, usually um, a four-string system or something like that. So you pull in lots and lots of rope, and those of you who have sailed know it tangles all around your legs, and the boom comes in not very far for all that rope you're bringing in, but your small force applies a huge force on the boom so you can overcome the pressure of the wind. So what you notice about the pulley systems is count these two ropes and that's the multiplication factor that you get on the force. If you've got two ropes here, it will pull a load twice as heavy as the effort you need to put on. But of course, remember that two ropes here means pulling in twice as much rope. Three here means pulling in three times as much rope, etc. And we call that the mechanical advantage of the system. Now, one more story that I forgot to tell you. Um, also working with the cadets, in fact. Some of you know that I've got a Willis Jeep, and uh, you might have seen it in my video about whether teddy bears should wear seatbelts. And uh, what I used to do is I used to push this Jeep down into a steep ditch that we had at the bottom of the grounds, which meant it was completely stuck. We couldn't drive it out. It was sort of bogged in. And I used to give the uh, challenge to my groups to get one cadet to pull it out by hand. And after a bit of head scratching and reminding them about pulley systems, they realised that if they attached a system like this that was horizontal to the Jeep, and it needed ropes going up and down and up and down, a multiple pulley system, then one person could pull with a small force and have a really large force on the Jeep and pull it out. And the Jeep moved about two metres, but the uh, cadet had to walk almost the full length of the grounds with massive amounts of rope to uh, pull the vehicle up. But they were successful. So I hope you've learned a little bit about pulley systems. And if you could follow my explanation, they're actually a lot easier than it sounds. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that video. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Music